Scope management. This is the first process. Scope management includes the processes involved in defining and controlling all the work required to deliver the project successfully. These are the four steps that we need in order to manage the scope. We need to plan the scope, define all the work that we need to do, then assign that work to the different teams, individuals, or people who are going to be in charge and responsible for that work. Verify the scope and adapt the scope if there are going to be any changes or opportunities to improve the work of the project. One of the tools that is used in managing the scope is called the WBS. It is a technique that helps you break down the project into different components so that you have a better idea of what is all the work that needs to be done. In this example, we can see that the goal of the project, which is at the level of impact, can be broken down into a second level, which are the outcomes or the purpose of the project. And then you can break it down into the different outputs or results. And finally, at the lower level, we have all the activities. The WBS is a tool that not only helps you define and identify all the work that you're going to do in your project, it's also a tool that helps you identify and monitor the project as it starts making its, con its completion. Once you complete all the activity, you know those activities are contributing for that output, and that output will contribute to that outcome and eventually will be a contribution of the project goal. So it's a way also to help you understand all the work you need to do in order to achieve that goal. The WBS can be structured in different formats. Here's an example where you can see all the WBS codes where you have identification and the description of all the elements of the work. Another tool used in scope management is called the Project Logical Framework. It is a four by four matrix that contains information about the goals and outcomes, the indicators, the means of verification, and any risk or assumptions. Let's look at that into more detail. In that four by four matrix, there is a vertical logic that we see before in the WS. We have the impact of the goal, then we have the level of outcomes or objectives, then the outputs and results and the activities for that specific element. So there is a breakdown structure embedded in that column that identifies all the work that we need to do. In the next column, what we have are what is called the objectively verifiable indicators. These are the indicators for each one of those levels. And they are impact indicators, outcome, output, and activity indicators. In the next column, we have the means of verification. That is the source of information for the measurement of verification of the indicators. And the recommendations for that list of what type of information, what are the sources of information, is that they need to be reliable, simple, accurate, have no bias, and be cost-effective. The last column in the matrix is the column where we list the risk and assumptions, especially assumptions. And they help us understand if there are going to be any changes, any risk, opportunities, what is happening, any modifications in the environment, or the conditions, and any expectations that people have about the project. And that is the column that also helps us validate another element of the logical framework. That element is known as the horizontal logic. And what it says is that once I have this activity and the assumptions that were linked to that activity are still valid, then are going to be able to obtain the results. Let's look how that works in the whole matrix. Here we see the matrix and how that logic works all the way up. From the activity and the assumptions, then we have the results. From the results and, the, and if the assumptions, we have the objective. If we have the objective and the assumptions are then held and they're still valid, then we know we have achieved the goal. This is an important element that you will see in the rest of the course in terms of how we manage those assumptions, and they are a key element to make sure that the logic that we have in the project is still valid. Assumptions do have a tendency of changing, and that's important. They are verified in the moment you're implementing the project. Here are some recommendations to help you manage the scope. Manage scope changes. It's very easy for little things to be added up and they're not being out of control can create more problems. 
balance the constraints. That means that if you're adding a scope or taking out a scope, look at what is going to be the impact on the other constraints of the schedule, your budget, and quality. Avoid unnecessary scope changes. In many cases, you don't need to add more scope just because there is a request for it. Make sure that whatever you're adding to the project is adding a value at the end of the project, meaning it's contributing to the success of the project. And monitor your indicators. Those are the, the types of information that will help you know whether or not the project is creating the changes necessary and creating the type of deliverables and the outputs and the outcomes that were planned.